Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one new hunches. Gold, gold discovered in a Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush, with Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Say, do you know the breakfast that's a favorite with so many top action Hollywood movie stars? It's this breakfast. It's nourishing, swell tasting Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat with milk or cream and fruit. These king size, ready to serve premium grains of rice or wheat pack a double barrel taste wallop. They're good for you. They're shot from guns. Yes, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. Tomorrow, sure, enjoy this breakfast treat. Eat Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Sergeant Preston and King were on the trail in territory usually patrolled by Corporal Lacey. Troubled by discrepancies in the Corporal's latest report, Inspector Maynard had sent Preston and King from headquarters with instructions to find Lacey. On King! On your husband! Though the territory was unfamiliar, Preston's inquiries had satisfied him that he was on the right track in his search for the young Corporal. But his inability to learn Lacey's exact whereabouts annoyed him. He studied the horizon thoughtfully, and it was then he noticed a faint cloud of smoke rising from a cabin to his left. Might be a good idea to stop there and ask about Lacey. The thin stream of smoke became more dense, darkening as it expanded and rose against the sky. That cabin's on fire. Hawking! That's it, fellow! Ha! The dog made the turn to the left easily. Hunking! Hunking! Responding to the urgency in Sergeant Preston's voice, King called on the team for more speed. Thick brush and snow-covered evergreens grew on either side of the cabin, forming an avenue toward the open front door. Okay, call your husky, come on. Preston halted his dog several yards away, so the team would be out of the path of flying sparks. Fire isn't too far gone, King. May be able to do something about it. Come on, boy. Hurry, King. As a faint and unmistakable call for help reached Sergeant Preston's ears, the great dog King turned in his tracks and started toward the evergreen growth on the Mounties' left. No, King, we've got to get to the cabin, boys. Someone's in there. Preston, help me. Help me. This way, King. King hesitated momentarily, then moved to obey Preston's command. Oh, that cabin's open, King. Whoever's in there must be trapped. Go on, fellow. I'm right behind you. Obediently, King lengthened his strides, racing to the cabin. Sergeant Preston's attention was focused on King as the dog rushed into the burning cabin. Neither the dog nor the Mountie was aware of a man of tremendous size who stepped from the evergreens to come up behind Preston. Oh. The man known as Samson Blake brought his gun barrel down hard. The Mountie stumbled and an instant later slumped unconscious to the ground. King was in the cabin where smoke came to meet him in the dark, cloaked shed clouds. It stung and burned his eyes. He stopped blinking until he could locate the man who had called for help. The smell of smoke filled his sensitive nostrils so that he wasn't aware of a man who came from behind the door. King spun in his tracks as he heard the man. King's legs buckled as the gun barrel struck him. Unconsciousness blotted out the smoke and hungry flames. The man picked up the dog in his strong arms and rushed through the back door of the cabin. Pussy! Oh, you got the dog, Yeah. Huh? I cracked him over the bed, my gun barrel. 
You better get a rope on him so he won't be able to get away when he comes to. Hurry up, you two. I got the dog team set to travel. What about Lacey? He's on the sled, tied up tight. I put a gag on him. He should have been gagged before. Preston must have heard him yell for help. Preston will think his dog and a man that called for help burned to death. Where is Preston? Lying in the snow in front of the cabin. Did he get a look at you, Sam? He didn't even know I was behind him. But he'll get conscious soon. You see the tracks of our sleds here. That won't make any difference. Lacey said Preston depends on the dog King to do his trailing for him. Without King, he'll never catch up with us. Yes, you're right, Wendy. I'll fasten this tug line to King's collar. It's a short length, but good and hefty. Sam, get out the muzzle we got for Kuna. What for? I'm going to put it on King so as he won't make us any trouble. Yeah, you should have left him in the cabin. He'd be dead by this time. He's worth a pile of cash. He's the finest dog in the Yukon. But he's Preston's dog. He's going to be mine. You're crazy, Fuzzy. He's a one-man dog. He'll forget about Preston when he finds out he can't get back to him. Yeah, uh, here's the muzzle. Good. There. That tug line will hold him. I'll fasten the other end of the sled and then put the muzzle on him. We'll put him in the sled and then travel. When Sergeant Preston regained consciousness, the cabin was a smoldering ruin. A trapper named Armand was standing beside him while another man looked at the ashes of the fire. Oh, easy, mon ami. My head. It's hot, eh? Well, let me help you to sit up. Who are you? I am Armand, a trapper. You, uh, I see your uniform. You are mounted, this far. That's right. What hit me? I do not know. But the bump on your head is big one. So oh, the Maori's conscious, eh, Armand? Well, he regained consciousness. But he is confused. You've got quite a bump on your head. Yes. My name's Edwards, Tom Edwards. Me and Armand are partners in a trap line not far from here. I'm Sergeant Preston. Well, Corporal Lacey generally patrols this territory, King. but he... Where's King? Huh? What's that you say, Sergeant? My dog, King. Where is he? He went into that cabin. Well, then I'm afraid he's done for. What? That's right. Me and our mind got here just to blaze his burden itself out. Too late to do anything. You were stretched out here colder than a chunk of ice. We've been waiting for you to come, too. Give him a hand, Armand. Yeah. Kill him dead. I, I can't believe it. You say your dog's name was King? Yes. I've heard of him. He was downright famous. Uh, it's too bad that the dog King was in the cabin when it burned down. Come on, we'll search the ruins. Just put your head... Bad bump you had. That was no bump. Somebody struck me from behind. No one was around here when we come. And whoever it was left before you got here. When King and I stopped, I heard someone in the cabin call for help. But this cabin, it has been empty for months. No one has lived here. Well, maybe some traveler holed up for grub and rest. Be careful, Sergeant. Those embers are still smoking. Well, what do you look, Sergeant Preston? You know what I'm looking for. I want to see if there's any trace of my dog or a man who called for help. Sergeant Preston's face was tense with concentration. While he searched through ashes, countless questions came to his mind. Who had struck him on the head? What started the fire? What was the reason for the mysterious attack? His fingers were burned by hot embers, but he continued his search for traces of his dog and the man who had cried for help. Another nail. And must have been on a door. And this is what... What you find, Sergeant? Yeah, yeah, what is it? Take a look at these. Oh, well, these, these look like buttons. They're brass buttons. That's right, the same type of buttons on my tunic. On your tunic? Sacrebleu. Then that means that a Mountie was here in this cabin. See, here's our official insignia. Hey, I wonder if Corporal Lacey... Keep searching. The man I heard call for help must have been Corporal Lacey. The three men who had captured King were miles away from the ashes where Preston and his two companions conducted their search. They had two sleds. Samson Blake drove one, while behind him, Fuzzy Cowan and Windy Morris jogged alongside of the other. King was in the second sled. When the great dog recovered consciousness, he found himself beside a man who was bound and gagged. Push you, Huskies! Push! Get along there, you mucks! Push! King recognized the man who had been with him in the cabin. He knew Fuzzy Cowan was connected in some way with his strange predicament. Where was Sergeant Preston? Where was the cabin that had been so full of smoke? Then he became conscious of the muzzle and the rope dangling from his collar. King realized he was a prisoner and that these men were enemies. He nudged the helpless passenger beside him in the sled and then leaped to the ground. Hey, Sam, stop the dog. Oh, 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 oh. Don't worry. He's muzzled and tied to the sled. There's not much slack in that rope. 
can't get away without dragging the sled and the dog team with him. He might do just that. Hey, 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 look out! Look out! Hey. Samson Blake had stopped the lead sled and had hurried to join Fuzzy and Windy. Even though King was muzzled, the three men stood out of his reach. As the great dog tugged and leaped, straining toward them, he looked as if he would break the rope that held him. He's so mad. He'll calm down in a minute. Look out! He's going the sled! Throw your weight on the other side, Wendy. Hold it down. Right! Sam, you get your dogs moving. Then I'll start my sled. You want me to do it now? Yeah. Once we get this sled moving, King will have to travel with it. Hey, you're right. I'll get my team going double quick. Push, you much. Push! Head going there. Push! 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 Meanwhile, after a futile search of the ashes, Sergeant Preston prepared to leave the burned cabin. Armand, the trapper, and Tom Edwards were with him. They looked dubiously at the tracks leading from what had been the back door of the building. Uh, I hope you are right, Sergeant, that the men in the sleds took your dog with them. I don't know how they could handle King, but I'm sure he did not die in that fire. What of Corporal Lizzie, Sergeant? I don't know. The policeman's tunic was burned in that fire. We found the buttons. There was nothing in the ashes to indicate that a man had burned to death. Well, maybe Lacey had an extra tunic with him and left it there. That doesn't explain the call for help I heard, or why I was hit on the head, or where King is. Yes, yeah, it's very mysterious. And yeah, I wish I could go along while you look for these sleds. But my wife's alone in our cabin. We're waiting for Clara Jason to get in from the States. Perhaps I can help the sergeant. It's a good idea, Armand. That is, if it's all right with the sergeant. Glad to have you come along, Armand, but I want to start as soon as possible. We need daylight for tracking. Without King, my team will be slow. Then, uh, good luck to you. Thanks, Tom. All set, Armand? We, oui, I'm ready, Sergeant Preston. Good. All right! Run, you husky! Run! As Sergeant Preston gave the command to his dogs, they started forward. But without King, the leader, they were slower. Preston's face was grim. The tracks he followed blurred momentarily as he thought of his gallant dog and wondered about the fate that had befallen him. King, King, old boy. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Say, tomorrow morning, you'll go for this family breakfast treat. Crisp, tender, swell-tasting Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. The ready-to-serve cereal shot from gun. Hold on there, bub. What's going on here? Say, who are you? What's all the shooting about? Me? Name's Jake. Klondike Jake. Oh. Well, look, son, everybody from Whitehorse to Dawson knows me. Been prospecting for years. I see. What brings you here? I just figured to look around, get me some supplies, and head back. Then I hid all this ruckus. Oh, look, Jake, that shooting you heard just now was me explaining about the keenest tasting breakfast ever. Oh. Namely, rice or wheat shot from guns. Huh? You see... We load huge guns with choice, sun-ripened, premium grains of rice or wheat. Then these guns are exploded. Out come big, giant grains, eight times normal size. They're magnified, crispified. Shot through and through with bang-up nut-like flavor, too. That's why Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat are so good to eat. Well, doggone. And for breakfast, lunch, or supper, all you do is pour out a bowl full right from the package. No cooking. Just add milk or cream and top with your favorite fruit. That's for me. And what's more, Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat are nourishing. They furnish added health values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Look, son, where do I get me a couple of packages of this here rice and wheat shot from guns? At the nearest grocery store. And, fellas and girls, here's a tip for you, too. Tell Mom delicious Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat is never sold in bags or bulk. To get the original, crisp, fresh rice or wheat shot from guns... Always buy the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Now to continue our story. Windy Morris, Fuzzy Cowan, and Samson Blake 
had to make camp for the night with the abducted Mountie named Lacey gagged and tied hand and foot on a sled. King was muzzled and fastened by a short length of rope to the same sled. While Sam and Windy staked out and fed their own dogs, Fuzzy made sure that the sled holding the Mountie was securely tied to a tree. That ought to hold the dog. Is that dog tied tight, Fuzzy? See for yourself, Wendy. He's big enough to hold a sled and Lacey. I guarantee he won't move the tree as well. Are the other dogs fed? Sam's feeding the last of them. What about King? I'll be glad to feed King if he'll untie my hands. Go ahead, Wendy. Freeze hands. He's feed too. Right. Now get this straight, Mountie. Don't try any tricks while you're free. We'll be watching close. If you try to let King free of that rope, we'll shoot you both. Very well. King seemed to know that Corporal Lacey was a friend. He showed no sign of antagonism as the Mountie removed the muzzle and offered a plate of food. But despite Lacey's urging, the great dog refused to eat. He had learned his lesson well and took food only when it was offered by his master, Sergeant Preston. Come on, King, take it, boy. It's all right. It's good food. Never mind. He's had his chance to eat. There's no need to muzzle the dog as long as you keep him tied. Do as I say. We're taking no chances. Very well. Sorry, King, I'll have to put this muzzle on again. Now, boy, I don't want to do it, you know that, but I have no choice. You better let me put it on, King, or we'll both be shot. Hurry up there. Put that muzzle on him. King sensed the friendly manner of the Mountie and submitted to the muzzle. Then Lacey's ankles were once more tightly bound, but his hands left free so he could eat. I told you men that forcing me to send a report into headquarters wouldn't keep another Mountie out of this territory. <laughs> Thanks to you, Lacey, you tipped us off about how to handle Preston and that dog of his. Now finish eating so we can tie your hands. You should have kept your mouth shut, Lacey. If it hadn't been for you, we wouldn't have been watching for Preston. Even your trick of throwing yourself against the table and upsetting that oil lamp didn't work, Corporal. Sure, you set the cabin on fire and brought Preston to investigate, but it didn't do you any good. Why not be reasonable, Corporal? Give us the information we want and we'll let you go. Now, we've heard that old man Jason discovered some of the richest gold in the territory before he died. I dare say that's true. In that case, there'll be enough for all of us. Why not tell us where that gold is? My instructions from Jason were to give that information to his niece. And that's what I'm going to do. Why, you cheap button polisher, I'll show hold you. Hold it, Sam. Why, you heard what he said. I'll lay his nose alongside his face for that. I'll... I said hold it. We'll be at the hideout tomorrow. You can deal with him there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. If you don't tell us what we want to know tomorrow, Lacey, you'll get tossed over a cliff beside the hideout. <laughs> Your death will look like an accident. It'll be murder, and the law will know it. The law will find you with no bullet holes or signs of violence. All the same, Sergeant Preston's in this territory. He'll find you no matter where you go. <laughs> if that's your final answer, stick out your hands and we'll tie him up again. King stopped pawing at the muzzle and looked up as Corporal Lacey submitted to having his hands retied. The Mountie looked at the dog, and between the two an understanding flashed. They both knew they were prisoners whose one hope was Sergeant Preston. In the meantime, Sergeant Preston and the trapper named Armand had made camp. Armand prepared supper and tried not to notice Preston's lack of appetite. As the Mountie glanced anxiously at the dark sky, Armand said, uh, Perhaps we find trail tomorrow, Mountie. A losing time, Armand. Oh, that is true, Sergeant Preston. But one cannot see in the dark like the cat. You must be patient. There it is. Huh? What you say? There's the moon, Armand. It's bright enough to show tracks. But we lost the tracks of these sleds. We need daylight. I'll be back. I'll prowl around and see if I can find them. Oh, that man. He tries to hide that his heart is heavy. Without his dog, he is... Uh, he's lost. Those sleds couldn't evaporate. Tracks will show up sooner or later. <laughs> Sergeant Preston's foot struck a thick crust of ice covering a wide stream. He grabbed the branch of a tree to keep his balance. Almost took a header that time. Uh, tracks. The tracks of the sleds, they traveled over the ice. Almost unable to believe his eyes, Preston dropped to his knees. The ice was thick enough to support his weight, and he inched his way forward. This is it. They went this way. I'm on. I'm on. Are you lost, Sergeant? Can you not see the campfire? Lost nothing. Got the dogs up. We're traveling. But I do not understand. 
We have lost the trail. We cannot find it till morning. I just now found it. Come on, boys. Stir yourselves. We're going after King, fellas. We've got to find him. Then up. Get the dogs tied up. Get around there. Shortly after daybreak, the three men who held King and Corporal Lacey prisoners broke camp and started traveling. Push! 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 Two hours passed and the terrain became desolate. Then, a few minutes later, they stopped beside an old shack that overlooked a cliff. Oh, 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 oh. Well, there's the shack. It's like we left it. Take the ropes off, Lacey. We'll let him take King inside the cabin and tie him to one of the bunks. You heard what Fuzzy said, Lacey. Stick out your hands so I can take the ropes off. When Lacey's hands and ankles were freed, the captive Mouty stood up, got out of the sled, and took a few steps to restore his circulation. Then, under the watchful eyes of the three outlaws, he went to work on the rope that held King to the sled. Easy, boy. Easy. Three guns are on you, Lacey. If that dog makes a break when you get the rope loose, we'll shoot him first and then you. King's still muzzled. What are you worried about? The muzzle will keep him from biking, but he might try to get away. It's up to you to see that he don't. Unless you want him shot. Corporal Lacey had no choice. He took a firm grip on King's collar. And when the rope was untied from the sled, he said... All right. Now what do you want me to do? Hang on to his collar and lead him into the cabin. When you get him inside, tie him to a corner post of the bunk. Come on, King. Come on, boy. There's nothing we can do. They'll kill us both if you make a break. As long as you're alive, you can hope to get back to Sergeant Preston. Come on, boy. Come on. King seemed to understand Corporal Lacey's soft words. At first, he had braced his legs and balked at going into the cabin. Then he looked at the three armed men. It's no use, King. Maybe you'll get a chance later, but for your own sake, you've got to come with me. That's it, King. Come on, boy. Easy, come Lacey had to struggle to keep his grip on King's collar. For a moment, it seemed that King would run off, dragging Lacey with him. But finally, he yielded and moved into the cabin, where Lacey tied him to a stout corner post of one of three bunks. Well, we'll all go outside where we can keep an eye on the back trail. We'll give this Mountie one more chance to save his skin. What if he won't talk? You know the answer to that, Wendy. Close the door of the cabin. <laughs> you afraid King will get out? He's a lot of dog, and I'm taking no chances with him. Wendy, you watch the back trail. All right. Now, Lacey, it's a long drop to the bottom of that cliff. It sure is. But you'd be dead before you got to the bottom. Scared to death, most likely. Or maybe you'll hit your head on some rocks on the way down. My answer is the same as before. Fuzzy, I'll go to work on him with my fists. Maybe that'll knock some of the stubbornness out of him. Go ahead, Sam. See if you can loosen his tongue. If you loosen a couple of teeth with it, it won't matter. All right, you... Sergeant Preston had sighted the hideout through binoculars while several miles away. He and Darman had left the trail and approached the isolated cabin from a stand of timber. While Sam and Fuzzy dealt with Corporal Lacey, Sergeant Preston came into the clearing... Armand crept up behind Windy as Preston shouted, That's enough! Hey, Leave that man alone! Preston! I'll get you! No, you don't, Fuzzy! Uh, as Fuzzy whirled to face Preston, Lacey threw his weight against the outlaw, knocking his gun from his hand. Samson Blake reached for his holster. I've got him, Fuzzy! Not so fast! No! Oh. I'll kill you for that, Preston. There's another. Go, let go of me. Not a chance. It was a battle of fists. The quarters were too close for gunplay. Inside the cabin, King had heard Preston's voice. He heard the fight outside. With new desperation, King lay on the floor, clawing at the leather straps of the muzzle. Lacey had fastened it looser than it had been before. King's strong paws and claws tugged and pulled. He felt the neck strap slip over his ears. With his paws, he pushed the muzzle forward until finally the neck strap rested on his nose. He shook his head, and the muzzle fell to the floor. With his strong fangs, he bit the rope. Strand by strand gave way under the sharp edge of his teeth. Then the great dog stood up. With a mighty effort, he strained, and the rope broke. King was free. He raced toward the window and poised himself for a jump. The oil paper covering the window ripped apart as King went through it. His paws struck the ground. Armand was down, and Lacey was staggering. Preston was battling two men when King got into the fight. The dog's free. He got loose. Kill him. Shoot him, Sam. My gun's gone. Get away from me. Stay back. If any of you try to pick up your guns, I'll break your arms. My, my head. Yeah, my head. I'm glad you got your gun on him, Sergeant. Preston, get this dog away from me. Steady, King. Oh. Calm down, boy. Everything's under control now. Sergeant Preston saw the frayed piece of rope hanging from King's collar. A mute testimony of King's struggle to free himself. King, old boy. Oh, Sergeant, I, 
I'm mighty glad you got here. Inspector Maynard sent me to look for you after he read your last report. <laughs> I hoped that report would get some action. It didn't make much sense, but these three men held me prisoner while I filled it out. Oh. Then they mailed it, thinking it would keep another Mountie out of the territory. They didn't realize that I deliberately tried to tip off headquarters to the trouble. Indirectly, Sergeant. These three are also responsible for Arthur Jason's death. Why'd they take you with them? They thought they could learn from me the location of Jason's gold. Then they were in the cabin that burned down. Right. It was Samson Blake who struck you on the head. I had to set fire to the cabin by upsetting a table with an oil lamp on it. You see, I hoped to attract your attention. You did that all right. Yeah, but they, uh, they outsmarted me. Samson slugged you before you could get to the cabin. The other two dragged me out. Then Fuzzy went back and got King. I see. The blaze was just getting a good start then. Oh, say, you haven't heard of a Miss Jason in this territory, have you? Why, uh... Her uncle had written her to come up here. Miss Jason, she is to stay with my friend Tom and his wife. She will be looking for you. Oh, good. Then I'll be able to give her the information Jason left with me. Shall I put handcuffs on these three, Sergeant? Yes, Lacey. Then we'll take them to the nearest jail. Right. There now. Look at you. I don't know how you managed to find us. They did their best to hide the tracks. There you are, Wendy. Why are you... I never doubted for a minute that you'd be wearing bracelets when Preston caught up with you. Uh, if it hadn't been for that dog. Yes, Sergeant Preston Armand and I all owe our lives to that dog and his devotion to his master. Now, <laughs> cut that rope that's hanging from your collar, boy. <laughs> there, that'll do it. Well, King, this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. Fellas and girls, the Yukon is a pretty rugged place to live. But look, whether you live in the great Northwest or here at home, you need plenty of food energy. Yes, and if you were to ask Sergeant Preston, you can bet he'd agree that a good breakfast is a mighty important source of food energy. So here's good advice. See to it that you eat the kind of breakfast you need every morning. You'll want to include a big He-Man's bowl full of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice with milk or cream and fruit. Try it. Wheat or rice shot from guns is crisp, tender, delicious. What's more, it furnishes added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Tomorrow, ask for Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice in the big red and blue Quaker package. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of King and the Baxter Gang. When I left King at Old Bob Baker's to keep little David Baker company overnight, I didn't think anything would happen before I returned. But I was shocked to learn that I had not only left Pop and David at the mercy of a killer but also King, whose life was the one the killer decided to take. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat... And Quaker Puffed Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. Your best bet for hot breakfast is Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, if you want to be a star in sports and school activities, make your hot cereal Quaker Oats, because Quaker Oats helps grow the stars of the future. You get more growth, more endurance from oatmeal than from any other whole grain cereal. Yes, it's less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. (laughs) 
This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice.